Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about drop down lists in Microsoft Access. Now, the words drop down don't appear anywhere in Microsoft Access, but everyone calls them drop down lists because it's used in a lot of other applications and like on the web, right? On a website, you might see a drop down list, and that's a valid term. But in Microsoft Access, we don't call them drop down lists. In Access, they're called combo boxes, but no one knows what combo box is, so I'm making this video to talk about drop-down lists, right? Because if you found this video, you were probably searching for a drop-down list. Now, this is gonna be a beginner-level video where I'm gonna discuss drop-down lists, how to make some basic ones. I'm gonna refer you to some other videos because I've covered combo boxes in detail in a couple of other videos. So I'm gonna also give you references to those, but we're gonna go over them quickly in this video and stick around to the end. I've got a cool developer level trick when it comes to dropping down a combo box. All right, first up, why do they call it a combo box in Microsoft Access? Well, it's a combination, a combo, a combination of a text box and a list box. So a text box is like this, right? We just type text in it. And a list box looks like this, where you've got a list of options you can pick from, but you can't type values into it. And the list is always open, so it takes up a lot of space. So a combo box marries those two things together. You can have a list that you can drop the box down, right, drop down, and pick from a list, or you can type in a value too, if the designer allows it, because you can have it so you have to pick from the list or you can type in your own values. There's ways to do it both ways. Access does not have just a basic drop down. It's everything you wanna do like this is gonna be called a combo box. So now you know the terminology. All right, so how do you make a combo box? Well, let me start off with my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want a copy, but you can use any database you want. Now, one method that you'll see in a lot of tutorials that I completely disagree with is using something called the lookup wizard directly in a table. For example, let's say in the customer table, design view, let's say we wanted to make state a list of options the user can pick from. Well, instead of making it short text with a type and a value, drop this box down here and pick lookup wizard. And this will allow you to either get the values from a table or query or type in the values that you want. Doesn't matter either way. All right, let's pick that one. Put a list of options in here, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, and so on. Let's say you only do business in those three states, right? Next, what label would you like? That's fine. And you could pick limit to list here. If you want to allow multiple values, that's a whole nother problem, right? You can have multiple select list boxes and then finish. Now, what that does is it creates a lookup list inside this table. And if you save the table and go back to table view, come over to state and you'll see now that you could drop this box down. And that seems very handy, right? It's not. It causes lots of problems later on. Trust me, if you have any plans whatsoever of getting semi-serious with your Access database development, do not use the lookup wizard in a table. Don't, it breaks all the rules of a proper relational database. Stay away from it. In fact, when I do my research for my videos, I often go and look and see what other people have done tutorials and videos and websites on, and the top three hits that I got for drop-down lists show how to use the lookup wizard. Don't use the lookup wizard. In fact, I have a whole nother video that I'll put a link to down below on why you should avoid the lookup wizard. All right, so I'm not gonna talk about it much more today, but just go watch this video if you wanna learn more, okay? Okay. All right, now I'm going back to a fresh copy of my database where the state field is just a regular text box, a short text field. And there are two kinds of actual combo boxes that you can create if you wanna replace, let's say, state here, okay? You can create a value list combo box or a relational combo box. Now a value list combo box lets you type in a list of values here and you can pick from them or you can also allow the user to type in whatever values they want. So for example, how do we do that? Well, just for the purposes of class, I'm gonna make some room here. I'm gonna get rid of zip and country and let's delete state and we're gonna add a combo box there. Let's make a value list combo box. So find combo box up here, right there, drop it right there. All right, we're gonna select, I wanna type in the values that I want. Next, put in your list of items. So we got New York, we got Pennsylvania, we got Florida, we got Texas. Again, let's say you only do business in those four states, 
but occasionally, maybe randomly once in a while, you get someone else from a different state. All right, next, are we gonna remember the value for later use or store it in a field? Well, I wanna store that value in a field, right? Let's store that in my state field. All right, because we're picking text, we're storing it as text, all that works fine. Next, what label would you like? Well, I'm gonna delete it because I've already got one that says city state zip there, so I'll just put in state, that's fine. All right, we can delete that label that it makes. And I can probably change this one to just say city state, right? Like that, okay. So now I'll slide my state combo box up right there and save it, close it. I like to always close my forms when I do design work change and then reopen them just in case. All right, open her up. There we go, drop it down and there's your list of options. See, New York, Pennsylvania. I can type in something else if I want to, Arizona, and it'll take it, right? See that? You might also notice this little box right there. This is the edit list items button and you can come in here and change that list if you want to. Okay, set a default value. Maybe you are in Florida and most of your customers are in Florida, right? Hit okay. And now if you go to a new record, you'll see Florida is the default down there. That's pretty cool, right? And of course, there are some options in the property that you should know about. Open up the properties. Double click on the box here if you don't see the property sheet. Now, first of all, it's called Combo 30. I don't like that. So I'm gonna go to the All tab and let's give this guy a good name, right? It's control source is state. That means that's where it's storing its value. It's bound to the field in the table called control source. But we're gonna also give it a name. I'm gonna call it State Combo. You can just call it State if you want to, but that just tells me it's a combo box. Now on the Data tab, right here is your Limit to List option. If you set that to Yes, then the users have to pick an item from your list. They can't just type in whatever they want. And even if you do leave that as set to no, you can allow or disallow value list edits. So even though they can type in their own stuff, they can't go in and change that list, right? If they can add Hawaii to their customer if they want to, but they can't add Hawaii to the list. Now there's a lot more you can do with value list combo boxes. If you wanna learn more, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. Now value list combo boxes are cool. And they're fine for just one-off little things, but what if you wanna use that same list of states in different forms or different reports, right? It's stuck here in this form. That combo box is the only place that list exists, right? So what about things like a customer list or a list of you know sales reps, all right? For that, you're gonna to wanna to use something called a relational combo box. Now, they're a little more complicated. Now, if you don't know about relationships between tables, you should go watch my relationships videos, right? Like how to link customers to vehicles, that kind of stuff. So to make this kind of relationship, we're gonna to need to store a state ID in the customer instead of the actual text of the state. And we're gonna need a table to store that list of states. Okay, so let's close this. Save changes, now we're gonna come back to it. Let's make a table to store our list of states, right? Create and then table design. And I'm gonna have a state ID, that's my auto number. The state, maybe the state abbreviation. And I usually put abbrev like that because abbreviation for, for talking about something that's so short, abbreviation is really long. So I just always do a state abbrev like that. <laughs> that's gonna be short text. And then maybe the full state name if you want, right? Save it, we'll call this the state T, the state table. Uh, there's no primary key defined. Access always pops this up. If you say yes, it's gonna make that the primary key, which is fine, it's the auto number. And then we'll put some values in. All right, we got NY, New York. We got FL, Florida. We got TA, TX for Texas. Why did I say T? I don't know what I said. Uh, AK for Alaska. Whatever else you wanna put in here. You can put all 50 of them in there if you want to. All right, save it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save that state ID wherever we wanna use this list of states, like in our customer table. So we're gonna get rid of that. Go into our customer table, design view. We're gonna get rid of the state. Now, if you wanna keep all your existing states, there's tricks you can play. You can use some update queries to copy the current state over into a state ID. I got a whole separate video on that. Here's a video on update queries. And you'll just make an update query to convert from the text over to the ID. But what I'm gonna do here is let's delete this state just for the purposes of class. And I'm going to add a state ID on the bottom here, state ID, and that'll be a number. 
All right, we're gonna store the ID from the state table in that field. So come back to the customer form, design view. Notice this is no longer valid. That's what that little green thing there says, right? It says no such field. All right, that's fine, goodbye. And now we'll make a properly relational combo box. Same thing, combo box wizard, drop it there. This time I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query. Next, which table or query should provide the values? Well, I'm getting my list of values from the state table. Next, what fields do you want? Well, you can bring over all three of them if you want to. You're only gonna see this guy when the box is closed, but you'll see both of these ones when it's open. That's helpful. And the ID will always be hidden. If you hit next, you'll see right here, we got a sort. Let's sort based on the state abbreviation. Next, and here we go, hide key column. That hides that ID. You don't really wanna see that, do you? No, hide it. And then you can resize these columns like this. So it looks nice and pretty, right? Next, now, you wanna remember that value for later use? Don't pick this one. We're almost never gonna pick this one. This should be the default option. We're gonna store that value in what field? We're gonna pick a state and we're gonna store it in the state ID in the customer table, All right? This is a list of fields from the customer table. Store it in that state ID, hit next. What label would you like to give for the combo box? Well, again, we're gonna delete the label. It doesn't ask you for a name, which it should, and then hit finish. All right, there's that label, get rid of the label. Slide that combo box up on here, all right? Make it even like that. Let's give it a good name. Scroll up to the top here. Let's call this again, the state combo. Save it, close it, and then open it back up again. And there we go. There's our New York, Florida, Alaska list, right? Now, when I pick Florida for me, if I close this and go back to the customer table, notice that it's stored a two in there because Florida is state ID two. And that's fine. That's how you build a properly relational database. And the benefit is I can use this state table in other forms now. I can use it in my order form. I can use it in my contacts form. I can use it wherever I want to. And it's the same list. If I want to change or add things to this list, I just do it here. I don't have to do it in five different places. If you want to learn more about relational combo boxes, go watch this video. I'll put a link down below. There's also a third kind of combo box that that wizard can make. It's called a find record combo box, and you can use it to find values in your form with a little search box. So go watch this video if you want to learn more about that. And that little box that pops up or lets you add and edit items in the box, it's called a list items edit form. You can make your own custom form to be able to edit those items instead of the, the default one that pops up. This is pretty cool too, go watch this video. Now, as promised at the beginning of the video, I got a little tip for the developers. Here, hang on a second. There we go, we'll bring developer to the front. All right, here's a little developer trick, a little VBA. What is VBA? It stands for Visual Basic for Applications. It's the programming language behind Microsoft Access and Excel and Word and PowerPoint. It's very, very powerful, lets you do lots of stuff. You can learn all the basics in about 20 minutes. Go watch this video if you wanna learn more. Now, there's a VBA method called dropdown which you can use when, let's say for example, you're tabbing and you get to this field, you want the box to open automatically for you. You call the dropdown method. Now, the first thing we gotta do is make sure that this box is in the tab order in the right place because it's gonna be the last control I added this to this form, so it'll be last in the tab order, so let's fix that. So here is state combo, see it's last, let's put it after city. So if I'm on city and I hit tab, it goes to the state combo box. That's another reason why you wanna give it a good name so it's not combo 30 in this list, right? All right, now go to the box, find its event tab. You wanna find the on got focus event. This event runs when the box gets focus, which means that you either tab to it or you clicked on it, right? Uh, hit the dot, dot, dot button. That'll bring up your visual basic editor. I got pretty big, let me resize it. There it is. Turn off the immediate window, okay. So in the State combo got focus subroutine. We're gonna type in here state combo dot drop down. That's it. So I need one line of code. A lot of the times the coolest solutions are just things you need one line of code for, right? Close that and now watch this. Close the form, open it back up again. And now if I'm tabbing, tab, 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 look at that, it opened up the box for me. 
See, that's the drop down method. I'm the kind of person where when I'm doing a lot of data entry, I don't like to have to stop and grab the mouse. So I'm gonna be able to tab to it and then use the arrow keys, right? And then tab away. You can also do the same thing from somewhere else. Let's say you wanna make a button over here that'll go to and drop down this box, right? So we're gonna go in here. I'm just gonna copy and paste that button, right? Put whatever you want as the caption. All right, right click, build event. Now, before you can drop it down, you have to move to it. So you have to say state combo dot set focus. That'll move the focus onto that box. Now, because there's already a got focus event in here, you can just rely on this one to drop it down. But if not, if you don't have the event in actually in here, you can just put it up here. Okay, but you don't need both of them. If it's already down here in the got focus, you can just do that. All right, save it. Debug compile once in a while. Make sure everything's okay, right? Close it, open it, hit the button. Boom, there you go. Pretty cool, right? All right, if you like learning this kind of stuff, I got tons of lessons on my website for, for access users of all levels. If you're a beginner, I got lots of beginner levels. If you're an expert, I got lots of lessons for you. If you're a developer, I got 50 levels now of developer training. So tons and tons of stuff to learn. I got extra seminars and templates and you name it. I got all kinds of Microsoft Access courses on my website. Check it out. Level one is free. If you haven't watched it, you'll find links down below. So that's going to do it. That's what a drop down list is in Microsoft Access. It doesn't exist. It's called a combo box. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Everyone always asks me about drop down lists, but that's the right terminology. It's combo box. And now you know, and knowing is half the battle. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.